Imagine for a moment that you're a bee. I'm dressed appropriately, so I can imagine that I'm busy, and winter is coming, and soon the flowers will be gone. And a bee has to collect as much pollen as possible to see his hive through the winter. Fly a mile in a bee's shoes, or something. Asters are one of the best late food sources for bees. If you're from New England originally, perhaps you remember the beautiful splotches of pink and purple splashed across the native landscape. These asters grow almost as well here and are the highlight of a fall garden. I have far more New England asters than I ever intended. They tend to seed themselves and I have to keep editing them out of the borders. In May, that's a curse, but in fall, it's a blessing. Another species of aster that is often overlooked actually thrives in the shade, unlike the New England aster. This is called white wood aster. It is native to New England, and it's tough and durable. It's the last beautiful flower to bloom in a shade garden. Autumn Joy Sedum is also tough and durable and lives up to its name. Feel the joy. The bees like the flowers almost as much as gardeners do, and the brick pink flowers hit just the right note in the fall garden. This is one of those unkillable plants, or at least you have to try really hard to kill it. Goldenrod is another perfect flower for fall. This variety is called Crown of Rays, and it's a bit of a mess because it got knocked over in the snowstorm. And there's really not much you can do about it except enjoy it in a prostrate position. Golden rods don't cause you to sneeze. That's a total myth. They only produce a very small amount of pollen and it's heavy and sticky and it's not easily airborne. The pollen is for bees, not your nose. Marigolds, pansies, and black-eyed Susans are also good late sources of food for bees. So keep them going as long as possible. Be kind to our bees. The planet depends on them.